What's good, guys? Um, the app is finally launched. It's right here. Um, not that many mentors right now. Just got Elon Musk on here. I've had some struggles with it a bit, like some authentication problems, but that comes with deployment and I'll try to fix it over time. But right, this is the application right now. You know, you can talk to mentors. I'll be adding a whole bunch more in addition. Um, you can add new mentors if you're in the pro model. And one of my favorite features that I've added is the light and dark modes. So apps looking good. I'm, I'm honestly super proud of it. But again, you know, there's going to be a lot of fixes. So I'd like to set the tone for this video. OK, it was mid July and I've already been coding for a couple of months. Right. I just finished CS50, which is like a what is it like a boot camp thing or a course on intro to computer programming. And I was finally making some strides uh, within, you know, programming. Like I made my first very basic application. Things were looking not that bad. Now, although I was making some form of progress, I wasn't really proud of the work I was doing. Like for example, right? The people that were in my class and that were finishing their projects, they were much better at it than me. Like the, the things that I was making were okay. Like I, I'll try to put something on the screen. It was like a law application. They looked okay, but a big problem was firstly, it was not functional. Also, um, it didn't look that good. And going online, uh, I noticed that a lot of developers actually tend to deal with this. Now it's usually called like imposter syndrome, but in, in addition, you could just not be that good at programming in the moment. Now it took a lot of self-reflection and effort and a lot of humility to notice that I just wasn't trying hard enough with my code. Like I would code for like 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, uh, three times a week. So barely anything at all. And I think that was the main reason why I wasn't making any progress. Like I tried Python, I tried SQL, which is like a, like a database. Um, I tried C, I tried JavaScript. I, 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 did, I tried a lot of different languages and still nothing really stuck. And I thought that the problem was with the programming languages themselves rather than my study routine. Now, I apologize, I don't really remember the YouTuber, but I remember him talking about the importance of a study routine when it comes to code. Like you can be studying the, the, the really the greatest languages and the top languages of our time. But if you don't have a good study routine and a good way to ingest the knowledge and, and in addition, apply the knowledge, then you really can't do much. Even back before I, I was working on CS50, my first language was actually Python. And all I did to study was three times a week, 20 minutes of Python on Codecademy. Now that's not to throw hate at Codecademy, but the way that I was studying and applying my knowledge was just not good enough. All I was doing was reading off of the code Academy screen and then coding with their little helper, uh, getting like answers right away on their code editor and then moving on thinking that I made some progress. And obviously that led to absolutely nowhere. Like I think I've talked about this multiple times and maybe you relate to this, but I would finish a lesson and then I would try to apply it on my own via maybe one of their personal projects or a personal project that I want to work on. It's like, what the fuck? Why can't I code? I just learned this. Like I literally just learned the topic and then I would set up the code editor and not be able to do a single thing. Now, a couple months later, after learning Python and CS50 and, and kind of finding my way within the space, I was finally able to pick up a study routine. And it was one of those moments where once I started doing them, I noticed a a bigger trajectory in how much I was learning to code. Now, as we said earlier, a study routine is really important. It allows you to stay consistent with your goals. It also allows you to focus on the things that you really need to focus in order to explode that part. In addition, it will allow you to learn code much faster than someone who does not use a study routine. Like the gym, having a study routine and being consistent with the way you are working just gives you the upper advantage compared to the people that don't mostly due to momentum and the reps that you're putting in by putting in more reps, AKA like coding more and doing the right things. 
you're able to maximize how much work you're getting done and how much you're learning. So there's three main parts of my study routine that's really composed how I, I'm working right now. Focus work, routine work, using different study tactics. So, so the most important part of this video will be the first part, which is focused work. The, the big issue with a lot of programmers is that when they are coding, they're A, super distracted, and B, they don't really have a goal when it comes to programming. This goes in all fields of, of work too. I, I think there was a study made by, I, I totally forget who, but they said that within an eight hour shift, a worker is at most doing like two hours of actual work. This is because we live in a world of a ton of distractions. And what I realized is, is the times when I was undistracted and really did my work for a long period of time without any distractions and I was in this like super zone space, I was able to get more work done, solve problems that I really couldn't do when I wasn't focused, and get 10 times more work done. So an actionable step, you may not be used to this, but um, if you want to be a coder, you have to have actionable steps. Find when and what you want to do tomorrow. So when do you want to code and what do you want to do in that coding session? And doing your best to limit your distractions. I can't underestimate and explain how important this part is. If you can go undistracted throughout your coding journey, you're going to see infinitely more results than someone that does not do this. All right, great. So now that you have started to do focused work, you should already be seeing some form of results. Now, the next thing, once you've done your focused work is to routinize. I think you can like you routine your workload. Now, a lot of people have made fun of me for saying this and, and explaining how important this is. But a lot of programmers, what they do is that one of the days that they code in, they code at like 6 a.m. And then the next day they code at like 1 p.m. I tend to learn better when I, I learn and work at the same time every day. And I actually learned this lesson from my personal training days when I used to train people. I saw results when I would eat at the same time and work out at the same time. I think it's because, you know, you're so, it's so ingrained in you and you just, you're a lot more disciplined. That's probably it. In terms of coding, by making it a routine and, and by going and, and sitting down for the same time um, every day, you, you firstly, obviously make the programming so much easier. Like imagine doing the same thing over and over and over again the days just become easier and you get to do much more work done because you're in this uh, super uh, focused and momentumized mode. So the actionable step for this part would be to set a time of when you want to work. And by pairing this with your focused work, I promise you in a month's time, you will see so much more results. Now, the final thing, this is a little bit of a, you know, an extra one would be to use different study tactics. Now I talked about how I was learning Python with Codecademy a while ago, and I do love Codecademy, but the issue with that is that I was only learning th through one mode. I would read and then apply through a code editor. And though that is pretty good, if you only stick to this, you become a pretty shallow programmer. By mixing different types of learning styles, such as reading books, watching videos, watching tutorials, applying through your own personal, like you just learning on your own, reading documentation. There's a vast field of a lot of programming learning ways, and you're really doing a disservice if you're sticking to only one. And if you want to know what I've been doing, I mostly read articles on programming. I read a lot of uh, GitHub code from other people. I also read documentation and uh, obviously I code, but maybe you want to apply something else. It generally doesn't matter. Like as long as you're doing the, the core basics of programming and, and reading, but what you will find is that you will learn much more of a subject when you can attack it from different angles. Like if you take two developers, one that only is, is watching tutorials on JavaScript versus one guy that's reading books on JavaScript, watching videos on JavaScript, doing tutorials on JavaScript and teaching JavaScript, maybe through like a video, that guy is going to learn much more and much faster. So an actionable step for this part of the video is to uh, list different ways that you'll want to learn subjects. Again, it could be whatever you want, but make sure you, you, you're enjoying it and can learn as much as possible. Now, this is what I've done up until now, eight months into my programming journey. And I promise you, if you just do this for a couple of months, you will see a vast difference in how you are programming. I'm not even kidding. It's, it's crazy. 
But anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you want any coaching, I'll leave it in the description below. It is free, so don't worry. And I'll see you in the next video.